This problem was used as an Amazon interview question. A cable of 80 meters is hanging from the top of two poles that are both 50 meters from the ground. What is the distance between the two poles to one decimal place? If the center of the cable is 10 meters above the ground. After I show you how to solve this problem, I will solve the variant of it in which the cable is 20 meters above the ground. Just because it's mathematically interesting. So how do we solve this problem? Let's observe the following picture. We have the first pole, we have our ground, and we have the second pole. Cable is hanging from the top of these poles, and the length of that cable is 80 meters. Poles are of the same height, which is 50 meters. Cable is hanging 10 meters above the ground. Since the cable is 10 meters above the ground and the height of the pole is 50 meters, that the lowest point of the cable is 40 meters from the top of the pole. Since the entire length of the cable is 80 meters, half of that is 40 meters. That means that the cable is folded exactly in half. Well, that means that the two poles are coincident. There is no distance between them. With this knowledge, our diagram is going to look like this. We have our pole. This pole has 50 meters in height. What we don't have is the cable hanging between the two poles. This cable is going directly down from the two poles because they are at the same spot. The cable goes down and then it goes up. The length of the cable is 80 meters total, which means that folded it is 40 meters. And that leaves us with the 10 meters above the ground. This problem is great because it separates those who think about the problem before introducing a bunch of mathematics into it, which they can end up not needing in the first place. So let's now solve this problem when the cable is 20 meters above the ground. We have a line representing the ground, then two poles with the equal height of 50 meters. And there is a hanging cable between them, which is 80 meters long. The center of this cable is 20 meters above the ground. The question is, what is the distance between the two poles? So we are talking about this distance right here. We are going to denote it with a letter D. We are going to solve this problem using symmetry and a conveniently placed coordinate system. First, we are going to split up the cable into two pieces, each having the length of 40 meters. So this is going to be 40 meters and here we have 40 meters again. Second step, we are going to find the distance from the center of the cable to one of the poles. From that point, it is easy to double the distance which we got to get a wanted distance between the two poles. So this is going to be that half length which we are talking about and we are going to denote it as r which is going to be equal to d half. The convenient coordinate system which we have talked about is going to be placed at the center of this hanging cable. The y axis goes at the center of the cable. The x axis is tangent to the center of the cable. It is parallel to the ground. The problem now is to calculate this distance r. The general catenary equation that's tangent to the ground or the x-axis takes the following form. y is equal to a multiplied by cosine hyperbolical of x over a minus a. The top of the pole in this diagram will have the coordinates of r and 30. Why 30? Because we have 20 meters above the ground. 
the total length of the pole is 50 meters. 50 minus 20 is 30. So this distance right here is 30 meters. In our coordinate system, x axis from this dot is going to be r. We have denoted that here. What is the y axis? The distance from the x axis, and that is 30. What we can do now is use this point at the top of the pole to get one equation. That equation is 30 is equal to a cosine hyperbolical of r divided by a minus a. Why? Because r 30 dot, which is this dot right here, belongs to the catenary. When we put in r and 30 coordinates in the catenary, we get this equation right here. Now this simplifies to be a multiplied by cosine hyperbolical of r over a, which is equal to 30 plus a. As a is in common on both sides of the equation, we can divide everything by a, and thus we get that cosine hyperbolical of r over a is equal to 30 plus a divided by a. We can get a second equation which is using the length of half of the cable. This equation is a multiplied by sine hyperbolical of r over a which is equal to 40. Again we can divide this by a and then we get that sine hyperbolical of r over a is equal to 40 over a. We now have these two equations. Our goal is to calculate r. We are now going to use hyperbolic identity, which is cosine hyperbolical squared of x minus sine hyperbolical squared of x is equal to 1. Then we get that for x, which is equal to r over a, that identity becomes cosine hyperbolical of r over a, of course cosine hyperbolical is squared, minus sine hyperbolical squared of r over a is equal to 1. Now by using those two equations which we got, we get that 30 plus a divided by a squared minus 40 divided by a squared is equal to 1. This means that 30 over a plus 1 squared minus 40 over a squared is equal to 1. This is 30 over a squared plus 2 multiplied by 30 over 8 multiplied by 1 and plus 1 squared which is 1 minus 40 over a squared is equal to 1. So this is then equal from the pairing of these two we get 30 over a minus 40 over a multiplied by 30 over a plus 40 over a plus 60 over a and 1 and 1 are going to cancel out and give us 0. So this is going to be negative 10 over a multiplied by 70 over a plus 60 over a equal to 0. We can multiply this entire equation by a squared. Now we get minus 700 plus 60 a to be equal to 0. a is equal to 700 over 60 which is equal to 70 over 6 and that is 35 over 3. Now that we have calculated this unknown parameter a we can use it in the second equation to get that sine hyperbolical of r over a is equal to 40 over a. Now sine hyperbolical of 3r divided by 35 when we plug in the value for the a is going to be equal to 40 over 35 over 3 which is equal to 3 multiplied by 40 over 35 which is just 120 
over 35. That is 24 over 7. So 3R divided by 35 is equal to area sine hyperbolical of 24 over 7. So R is going to be equal to 35 over 3 area sine hyperbolical of 24 divided by 7, which is approximately 22,7 meters. The distance between the poles was D. R was defined as D half. So to get D, we get that this is equal to 2R. And that is going to give us an approximate of 2 multiplied by 22,7 meters. So D is going to be approximately 45,4 meters. The distance between the two poles is 45,4 meters. Now let's try to solve the problem from the beginning, where cable is hanging 10 meters from the ground using this method with hard mathematics. I specifically want to do this to show you which problem you are going to encounter if you don't think about the problem before you try solving it. So we have our pole, we have our cable. This is now going to be 40 meters the length of the half cable. We have our distance R. The pole is going to be 10 meters above the ground, 50 meters com total. So this is going to be 40 meters. This is the origin of our coordinate system X, Y, which we had on the picture before. We are using the same diagram. This is going to be the dot with coordinates R and 40. So again, we have our conveniently placed coordinate system. We will use the same equations and we'll substitute the new values from this particular case. Point at the top of the pole is going to give us an equation that cosine hyperbolical of R over A is equal to 40 plus A divided by A. Half of the cable length is going to give us the equation that sine hyperbolical of R divided by A is equal to 40 over A. When we apply the hyperbolic identity, we get that cosine hyperbolical squared of X minus sine hyperbolical squared of X is equal to 1 cosine hyperbolical squared of r over a minus sine hyperbolical squared of r over a is equal to 1. So we get 40 plus a over a squared minus 40 over a squared to be equal to 1. In order for this equation to be well defined, a has to be different than 0. So 40 plus a squared minus 40 squared divided by a squared is equal to 1. That means that 40 plus a squared minus 40 squared is equal to a squared. So 40 squared plus 80a plus a squared minus 40 squared is equal to a squared. We then get that 80a is equal to 0 because these two are going to cancel out and these two are going to cancel out. From this equation, we get that the only solution is for a to be equal to 0, which is impossible because a has to be different from 0. So this equation has no solutions. And as you can see now, when you hit a wall like this using mathematics, you have to change your view of the problem and think logically about what is going on. This just goes to show you that you can't apply mathematical identities without any thinking behind it. So thank you for watching. I hope that you have enjoyed this video and I recommend that you watch this one next. Please like, share and subscribe. I am looking forward to reading your comments and I'll see you in the next video.